Sarah Krim of Norman, Oklahoma, spends some time every day stitching a little history together. She makes quilts that don't just warm the body, but the mind. Quilts were originally used for um, keeping people warm. They used, uh, as we said, scraps and made warm covers out of them. The rooms were not heated, and uh, uh, certainly not the bedrooms, generally were not heated, and they needed to have warm covers. Now, uh, we don't have to teach uh, our granddaughters, our daughters, how to quilt. We turn up the thermostat, or we turn up an electric blanket, so when we learn to quilt now, it really is something that you want to make, I would call it, folk art. Maybe it isn't really an art form, but a folk art type of thing. Art, folk art, craft, or skill, it doesn't really matter. The quilts Sarah Krim produces are beautiful. Some are traditional, some aren't. Some are lifestyles away from what we traditionally think of when we think of quilts. And all reflect the woman, Sarah. She keeps very few samples of her work. Everything she makes is made with someone in mind, a handmade memory. The quilts may be reflections of earlier times and older ways, but they are Sarah Krim's today, a way of touching the past. junior high school when I was in the seventh grade and uh, I paid thirty dollars and sixty-five cents for it and they were so delighted to get that much money for it that they even delivered it and carried it down in the basement and I've just been involved with them I liked it and I got another one and another one and somebody wanted to buy one so I sold one and got another one it just one thing led to another and it's been about 25 years and still doing it what Bob Reno does is work with wires, wood, plastic, and persistence to bring back a little rhythmic history. Where others might see rubble, he sees soft lights and a bit of the past. all the different wood and the different veneers, but to really appreciate the beauty of this thing, you've got to see it in a darker room. It's the one you love by the and your heart is not for a loop. You can conquer much more if you don't do. Walk it off, walk it off. What the good of this and hear open? Why be so confused? Take yourself out in the open. Reno and a partner operate a shop that restores, repairs, sells, and loves the old music makers. This one is destined to go to a Norman restaurant that peddles nostalgia with its meals. Meanwhile, the old Wurlitzer is earning its living, a nickel at a time. Oh. 
Some folks say they don't make things the way they used to. Well, some folks are wrong. David Lester does. He makes chairs. The way his granddaddy did, the way his great-granddaddy did. No glue, no nails. An electrical plug-in here and there along the way, but mostly he works with eye and hand and hammer. In a chrome and naga hide world, it's kind of nice to watch him work. I did. Join me. Some of the designs are his, some are his granddad's. This is one granddad came up with some decades back, and it's still a bestseller. Many of the tools are especially made just for this work, designed to do things better, not just faster. According to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, there are only about three handmade chair factories in the country. And this is the only one in Oklahoma. It's in Tahlequah. David Lester says, stop by sometime. Pull up a chair. the east all the way from England. For a while it hung out in basement rec rooms, played by kids. Now, in a land tamed by the cowboy and the red man, a land where men are expected to be wild bull riders, darts have moved west and grown up. Some say Chad Sylvan is the top dart in these parts, and there's no doubt that at eight paces, he owns the bullseye. Or any other part of the board he throws at. His opponent, Bob Jones, tosses a mean titanium tip himself. These two are at the top of a sport that may be the fastest growing organized recreation in the state. They're playing at D'Artagnan's, a dart club and drinking establishment. And this is Wednesday. It's tournament night. We're playing 501, best two out of three, single elimination, and mugs away on the diddle. There'll be four preliminary rounds. It takes a while to learn to speak the language, but there seem to be a lot of students available. It's not hard to understand the popularity of this game. Darts are a lot lighter than a bowling ball, and you seldom break a sweat, even in a fast-paced tournament. The rules are a little less complicated than those in bowling, but it boils down to you have to hit what you aim at, or at least come close most of the time. By the way, Chad Sylvan did win this tournament, but he may not be all that tough. Come on down, give it a try. He'll be waiting for you next Wednesday.
A lot of people go home in the evenings and mow the lawn or work in the garden. Sometimes Harold O'Brien does that too. But the odds are just as good that if the lawn is in good shape and the garden's not doing too badly, O'Brien will decide to just take a walk instead. For O'Brien, taking a walk is an uplifting experience. When O'Brien was a kid, he made himself a pair of stilts. Now, a lot of kids do that, just because it's fun. O'Brien is still having fun. He's never done this as a professional. The only entertaining he's done was for the occasional child that wandered up to watch. He's never fallen down, not even from these short stilts. That's right, these are the short stilts. O'Brien has taken stilt walking to new, grander heights. Some people opt for a life of middle-aged terminal dignity. O'Brien instead bought himself a present and learned how to use it. O'Brien is a reminder that being an adult, a responsible adult, does not necessarily mean an end to childhood. He's holding on to something too many of us may have forgotten.
Oklahoma is a long pickup truck haul from Hollywood, but some of Tinseltown's stars shine brightly right here. Hey, why do you Bob Smith and his twin brother Charles deal in reflected starlight. They sell memories by mail order in the form of photographs and posters from their office in Canton. It's a fascination and a business that started over a half a century ago. The way we got the idea was when we were kids, about nine years old, why the uh, theater there gave us all the posters every, every time they'd change uh, their pictures, they'd give us all the old posters, you know. And we'd keep them after so many months or so while our mother would make us get rid of them. The brothers make copy negatives of the memorabilia they've collected over a lifetime. Charles does most of the darkroom work. The buyers of these prints range from authors of books about movies to just average people who happen to be fans. Both brothers say that John Wayne is their favorite actor. He's also one of their biggest sellers. The Smiths have over 100,000 negatives. You would have to have terminal insomnia and live in front of late night television to have even heard of a tenth of the movie titles they have filed. Yet the brothers say they've seen almost every movie listed. Maybe they have. They've operated theaters all over this state since before movies talked. But these days, when they're not in the office, they say they watch television. They say movies have changed. They should know. This is Dallas, Texas, city of polished glass, a little western class, a lot of money. And on one night of the year, moderately insane. It was at this point in the story that I plan to discuss the philosophical and sociological meanings of the OU Texas rivalry. But OU won. I changed my plan. This is OU Texas 82. In 45 seconds, 15 edits and a freeze frame. Enjoy. Three years was a long time.
George Fike and Josie, time travelers, visitors from another age. That's their business. They sell a look and a listen at a time when things might not have really been better, but were a whole lot simpler. Their brand of history can draw a crowd. The machine that makes the music is over a hundred years old. The music itself is timeless. A mixture of summer and hot dogs, cobblestones and cotton candy. Josie is one of five monkeys that work with Fike. Fike is one of a kind, the last Italian organ grinder. Out of place in a 1980 shopping mall, well, the crowds don't think so. They turn a shopping mall into a mirror on the past. Fike learned his craft from an uncle. At 67 years old, he has a half a century invested into entertainment. Now, he and his wife travel the country, one shopping center to the next. They make their living a nickel, dime, and a quarter at a time. Josie stores the handouts in her pockets. After each piece of music, trades them for a handful of kind words, delivered in a mixture of English and Italian, with a little German thrown in. Josie understands it all. If you get a chance to see George and Josie this week at a shopping mall here in the city, try something, try to watch, and frown. That's hard to do. At a time when some people are hard pressed to afford a little happiness, the organ grinder is selling a bargain. Buy a smile for a quarter. That's cheap. Tulsa, Oklahoma uses hand and eye, mind and ear, applies them to hundred-year-old wood, and creates an instrument that some say is the ultimate tool of music, the violin. Rody can hear the music of the future and the tap of a knuckle on unfinished wood. A shred, just a splinter, can make the difference between just music and magic.
put bow to string except to test the final product. But he is a music maker. Without his hands, eyes, ears, and probably his heart, a hundred violins would still just be wood. <laughs>